So you got a backing plate. This is a Bendix style brake. We have a secondary shoe and a primary shoe. The secondary, the lining is longer than the primary shoe. Just by looking at this, we know because this shoe's in the back and our adjusting, all our adjusting hardware is towards the back of the vehicle. That's normally how, that's how it's gonna be. We have a single anchor, a single anchor at the top. And if we follow this around, there's nothing um, holding these shoes from shifting. Okay, we can watch that move. When we apply the brakes, the shoes are gonna come apart. The drum is rotating in a counterclockwise position looking at this. The primary shoe is gonna come into contact with the drum. We're gonna shift around and that energy is gonna transfer through the star wheel adjuster, up through the secondary shoe and hit up against the anchor pin. And that's gonna create our wedging effect or our self-energizing action, All right? So right away, out of the gate, when we start talking about things, we're gonna have primary stuff and we're gonna have secondary stuff. So we're gonna have a primary return spring and a secondary return spring, okay? And this sh sh shorter length lining is always gonna go towards the front of the vehicle. The secondary lining, secondary shoe is gonna go towards the rear of the vehicle. And then our hardware, our adjusting cable, lever, pawl, whatever we have over here is gonna be mounted to the secondary shoe. We can already divide this assembly in half. To begin with, this is the tool I like to use. We're gonna use this end to remove the springs and this other end is to install the spring. To use this tool, we have a hole in this end and we got this little piece right here. We're gonna put it over top of the anchor pin. And all we're gonna do is rotate this handle around. And prior spring off. Then we're gonna take off the secondary spring. Same thing, put the tool on, twist it around, and pop it off. This is like uh, 15, less than 15 bucks for this tool and some other tools we're gonna be using. So we remove our secondary return spring. Next thing we're gonna remove this is called an adjuster cable. Star wheel adjuster cable. It's a cable and it's going to actuate our star wheel adjuster. To get that off, that'll work too. You can push this lever on back, move it back. That'll take the slack off so you can pull the cable off the anchor pin. So we move the cable, then we have the cable guide. This cable guide has a little raised spot right there. That raised spot is gonna have to sit down tight in that hole. It can pop out of the hole. Then your cable's got slack in it. You need to sit firmly on that brake shoe. Next piece we can remove is the shoe guide plate. This can go on wrong, okay. To remove the hold down springs, we're gonna use a hold down spring tool. This opening is gonna slide over the cap or slotted retaining washer. This end's gonna slide over it. When we do that, when we slide it over top of here, you're gonna push down while holding your finger on the back side of the pin, and you're gonna turn this 90 degrees or 
a quarter turn. We're going to remove both of the hold down springs and then we'll be able to pull this assembly off all as one. So I push down on the spring, turn it a quarter turn, comes off, the hold down pin, we have a hold down spring, take off the other side, push down, turn it a quarter turn, The other hold down spring and hold down pin. The next step is this parking brake strut. This one's missing a spring. Pop that out. We have a parking brake strut. Notice we have two different ends to this. This is a wide end. And this is a narrow end. See the gap? All right. And now we can pull this unit off as one piece. Attached to the secondary shoe, we have a parking brake lever. This would normally have a cable coming through that would pull that lever. This one doesn't have a cable attached. So a lot of times the parking brake lever just kind of falls off to the side right here. So that contraption that came flying apart, this is one of the pieces that came out. This is a star wheel adjuster. This end is threaded. This other side has a star wheel, a button. What side of the vehicle does this go on? The left. Up top, we have the wheel cylinder, anchor pin, this whole assembly is the backing plate. Here, here, and here are backing plate pads. When we disassemble everything, you're gonna, you would clean this backing plate and you would make sure that these pads are clean. If you gotta use a little sandpaper, a little wire brush, clean all the rust off it. You're also gonna check these spots to see if they're worn. Those, the pads come in contact with these points on the brake shoe. When we put these brake shoes on and the shoe's applying, it's gonna rub like that. You can even hear it squeaking. That squeak could be a customer complaint. Also, if it develops a little ridge in there, it can snap. If, it, if there's a little ridge developed there, it could click. Our parking brake cable is going to come through here. So we have two shoes. We have a secondary brake shoe and a primary brake shoe. And we can look at those shoes and we can see that the linings are different lengths. This being the lining. We have our return springs. This will be our secondary return spring. And this will be our primary shoe return spring. We know that on this one because white and white and green with green. On some vehicles, the primary spring can be longer than the secondary spring. We have our parking brake strut our strut anti-rattle spring. We have our hold down springs, slotted retaining washers or hold down caps, star wheel adjuster, this being the star wheel, star wheel cap or button, star wheel adjuster lever. This one has an L on it. We have our adjuster cable. We have our cable guide. We have our shoe guide plate and our parking brake lever. These will also go on a left or right. 
our hold down pin is going to come through and turn it a quarter turn or 90 degrees and it's going to lock that pin in. Remove it, turn a quarter turn and pull it out. The spring is our adjuster lever return spring. Spring's going to hook into the primary shoe and hook across to the star wheel adjuster or the adjuster lever is going to be hooked to the secondary shoe and this spring serves two purposes. One purpose is to return the adjuster lever. The other purpose is to hold the shoes together tight to the star wheel adjuster. So with our secondary and primary shoe, if we look at them, they are the same. Everything's the same except the length of the lining. If I hold them up together, all right, they match up. What that means is we can put them on backwards. Everything will mount up. If we put our shoes on wrong, backwards, the brakes will still work. The reason we, we have this longer lining on the secondary shoe is because when these, when these brakes operate and the, the, the primary shoe comes out and we force, we wedge that into the drum harder. So this one, grab, the primary shoe grabs on, comes around, transfers that energy through the star wheel adjuster and forces the secondary shoe tighter and tighter into the drum. That's our self-energizing action. They also call it duo servo action. So if these, shoes, if these shoes were flipped and the primary shoe was in the back instead of the secondary shoe, our brakes would wear out, this shoe would wear out, pad linings are gonna wear down out of spec faster. They'll still function and feel for the most part normal. Before putting the secondary brake shoe on, make sure you have your parking brake lever attached. Put our brake shoe up. I like to put the hold down pin through so the end is vertical. Hold your thumb on the back. We're going to put our hold down spring on over top. I like to make sure that that is straight up look through the window, I put that window straight up, hold my hand, and make sure your slotted washer is turned 90 degrees so the hold down pin will lock in there. Next shoe we're going to put on is the primary shoe, put our hold down pin through, same process. Make sure it's vertical. Our hold down spring. Make sure the, the line's vertical. Easy. The next step is we're gonna put on our return springs. And we're gonna put in our adjuster cable and we'll put in the parking brake strut and anti-rattle spring. Again, we have two ends to the parking brake strut. We have this wider end. We have that wider because it's gonna go in and over top both the parking brake lever and the shoe. The narrower end is gonna go, it only has to go over just the primary shoe. The anti-rattle spring, we're putting that in place. Otherwise, this, the parking brake strut will rattle around hitting bumps and stuff for silencing. We're gonna put in the primary return spring. These hooks at the end, watch slowly, watch as I, watch as I slowly put it in. Go in and around. That way they won't pull out of this hole. 
I'm going to put the shoe guide plate and I'm going to put my adjuster lever cable adjuster cable notice there's a flat side and a pushed out side when we put this on we want the flat side down take our spring tool and put the spring on okay now at this point we're not quite right we're gonna pull our shoe back we're gonna get our All right, so we got our parking brake strut, anti-rattle spring, primary return spring, shoe guide plate, and adjuster lever cable. The next step, install, we're going to put our cable guide. On this cable guide, there's a little dimple on there. That little dimple needs to seat down in tight in that hole. Okay. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to get my adjuster cable up out of the way. If you, if, you put the ca if you leave the cable hanging down here and you put your spring on, you're not going to be able to get the cable around where it needs to go. So get this thing up out of the way a little bit. Take our secondary return spring. I'm holding that down with my fingers, holding the spring, take my spring tool, pull the spring over. Verify that our cable guide is seated firmly against the secondary brake shoe. Let me say that again. The cable guide is firmly seated against the secondary shoe. Next step, we can put our star wheel adjuster in. Slide our shoes to kind of hold it there. This spring, everybody wants to put this spring in like that. The problem is, it just pulls right out of there. You have to take the spring Push it in and around like that. Now it won't come out of the hole. Okay. You kind of hook all this up a little bit. Now we're all hooked up around here. We just got to get this part of the lever into that hole. Pull it back. Pull it back and into the hole. Now that we're all hooked up, part, the adjuster lever cable, if it's properly routed, it comes around this uh, shoe guide plate, comes down, hooks up. And if we look, our adjuster lever is looking nice and straight right here. If that cable isn't on here properly, and if that shoe guide plate is not firmly seated against that secondary brake shoe, this cable will be too low. Your brakes won't self-adjust. We have another tool that this end Can hook onto a spring and we can tighten it down and then grab on and pull the spring on and we have a brake spoon that we come in behind and we can adjust 
our brakes. We're driving forward and we hit the brakes. The shoes come out and the force is, is transferred through the shoes, primary shoe through the star wheel adjuster, into the secondary shoe and we wedge into the drum. Now, when we go in reverse, I want you to watch this lever move. So when I'm in reverse and I hit the brakes, apply the brakes and we adjust. So when that shoes start to move too far, the lever moves and we'll turn that star wheel. 